Hey. What's up? How are you? I'm good. How are you? Doing good. Welcome. This is Juan, uh, aka Double Duty Daddy, aka my very good friend. Uh, Juan also writes for The Points Guy, amongst other people. Who else do you write for, Juan? Uh, Business Insider, um, Miles to Memories occasionally, uh, but really just for TPG at the moment. Okay. And uh, what's your specialty? So um, I talk about points and miles, loyalty programs, but I also talk about family travel. Um, and specifically, I talk about how you can maximize Airbnb stays to, uh, to kind of suit your travel style. Um, whether you have a family, whether you're single, whether you want to explore a city and you want to feel like a local. Um, and there's a strategy to find the best Airbnb. So um, I talk a little bit about everything, but mostly uh, those topics I just, I just mentioned. We have to talk a little bit more about Airbnb. I'm curious, do you happen to have any idea, somebody asked this last night in a chat, if uh, they booked a stay with credit cards and the stay gets can uh, with gift cards and the stay gets canceled. Do you have any idea if it goes back to the gift card? It or? does. It does. It, it does. goes back to the gift cards. Yep. Okay. So you That's keep the original gift cards if you made any purchases. Like I just booked one uh, for Bali and I used gift cards there, but we might not go. So if I cancel it, the funds will go right back to my gift cards. Yeah. Uh, that's really good to know because as soon as I use them, I throw them out. I know. I know. But luckily, Airbnbs are all, uh, for the most part, they're virtual. So that just goes right back to that virtual card. Okay, that's so, good. So key to go kind of put them in a certain inbox in your email address mm -hmm. and make sure that you don't forget them because then that's, you know, I have AA gift cards galore from airline credit uh -huh. and I literally just put them in a specific box in my Gmail so I never forget that because otherwise I never thought to do that with all my Delta yeah. gift cards. AA. Oh. Right, right. You don't want to lose hundreds and hundreds of dollars worth of the airline gift cards. So. Well, I have yeah. my founder's card concierge go through them like once a year and check the balances. Oh, really? Yeah. So I start every single episode with our guests with something called rapid fire. Okay. Now, just so you know, it can get a little spicy. I think your questions aren't actually that bad. Cool. So Good. let's get started. Okay. So first thing is what show that's streaming would you not be able to get through this ordeal without? Um, Ozark, probably Ozark season three just You're started. Said that. Yeah, I really, I really like it. Honestly, it keeps my, I, I watched, um, I watched Tiger King and it was fascinating, but, uh, that's just six episodes. So right. definitely, definitely Ozark right now has got my attention. Okay. So controversial question, which one's better, um, Tiger King or making a murderer? I haven't seen making a murderer. So I need to see it, but I'm all about those murder mysteries. And is it a murder mystery type show? Oh my God. It's, it's, the oh, then I, need to see it. then I need to see it. It's the best thing you'll ever watch. I promise. Okay. I'll, I'll get on that. We have what, like a month more of quarantine. So I yeah, will definitely yeah. get on it. Oh yeah. yeah. And there, I think it's also like six episodes, but it's two seasons. So, oh, okay. So I'll watch both seasons. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. That'll be next after Ozark. I'm already halfway done with the Ozark season. So I should be, should be ready to go for making a murder soon. Cool. Awesome. Cool. Yeah. Like what would we do without this stuff? <laughs> I don't, I really don't know. Okay. Second question. Favorite airline? Uh, for domestic travel, probably JetBlue for me. Okay. Yeah. What about uh, international? You have one? Uh, for international, uh, I love Japan Airlines. Okay. Good yeah. answer. Their first class is like a, the biggest recliner I've ever seen. It's, it's like the so biggest seat I've ever seen on a plane. It's like your dad's leather chair from the <laughs> yes. 80s. It's awesome. so comfortable. But then it reclines and the bed's really comfortable. Um, I, I, would, I would argue it's, it's, for me, it was more comfortable than Cathay Pacific's throne on first class. But uh, Japan Airlines for me was like special. Plus you add their Japanese service and you just feel like a million bucks. Yeah. yeah. Um, I accidentally flew. <laughs> it was an upgrade gone wrong situation. So I ended up in the back, well, in premium economy. And yeah. uh, I don't know much about their food because I got a hot dog and a yogurt. On Japan? I, I, yeah, neither of which I would eat. It was the weirdest meal ever. Um, yeah, that was a big mistake. Anyway, next they give you They give you the Japanese or the American option, so I'm guessing you want the American option. I never would have picked a hot dog and yogurt. Nobody gave me an option. Oh, really? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I just remember being like, oh my God, I'm going to starve. Maybe it was a short haul flight. Was it a short flight? 14 hours. Really? Wow. Yeah, really you know what? It was 12. It was 12. That was a bad day for the crew that day, I guess. Oh, yeah. 
I was crying in the bathroom, but I'll tell you that story another time. <laughs> you got it. You got it. Okay. Favorite hotel chain? Uh, Hyatt. Easily. Easy. Okay. And give me one credit card you couldn't live without. Right now, it's the Amex Gold. But uh, overall, it's probably the Chase Freedom. Uh, I just, I always max out the five points per quarter on whatever that category is. So usually that's kind of my everyday forever card. But mm -hmm. right now, my Amex Gold just takes the cake on, on all my purchases usually. Well, my purchases, my bonus category purchases. Right. I hear that. Yeah, I love the Freedom card. Yeah. Uh, okay. So um, you and I talk a lot and I happen to know what's going on in your life travel-wise. So why don't you tell me a little bit about your crazy Asia itinerary? I mean, and you kind of have to go through the airports too. Sure, so. sure. So I, um, I booked over a year ago. Obviously, I needed to find award availability. I had a goal in mind. I wanted to take my wife and twin daughters, my six-year-old twin daughters, to Southeast Asia. I've never been to Southeast Asia. So for me, I wanted to do it up big. So we ended up, um, I ended up booking us Cathay Pacific first class, um, sorry, my apologies, business class from um chicago no from new york to hong kong and then a month later fly back from hong kong to chicago so i was able to secure those long-haul flights with alaska and american miles at 331 days out so literally on the day that i could book i did book and i found a water availability and out of five seats in business class that they open up i got four out of those five so i was in heaven obviously i was super excited I couldn't believe I'd be flying, you know, 30 hours total, more than 30 hours total with my family on a live flat product um, that, of, that, of that caliber. Um, and then obviously now we are looking at a potential cancellation of that trip because of what's going on with COVID-19. So we are not sure what we're going to do yet. I'm giving myself a deadline till May 1st. But um, overall, I mean, it's, it's a huge get for me to be able to kind of give that to them. Um, they don't know what they're about to experience or what they were going to experience, but I know that for me, it's just really fulfilling. Um, and then obviously, inter Asia, we're going to have a lot of um, nice hotel stays, nice Airbnb stays. Um, not flying anything sexy internally, uh, really just like low budget Air Asia's of the world. And actually, I'm flying a Fifth Freedom flight. KLM from Singapore to Bali was going to be pretty exciting for me. Um, so, all these things are in jeopardy now, but as everybody else is going through. So, but yeah, that's, that's, my, uh, that's my big uh, trip plan that hopefully is not a letdown, but we'll see. So like what types of challenges do you find that you encounter when you're traveling with the girls or when you're booking travel with the girls? So there, there's none now. At six years old, they're pretty self-efficient. They're, they're big girls. Um, what I do notice is when I travel abroad, um, like we went to Morocco and Portugal in November and like anywhere we were, people would get us out of the lines and literally be like, come on, you're going to the front of the line. Whereas in the U S that's not how it works. You kind of wait your turn mm -hmm. and you, it doesn't matter if you have small kids. So overall, I mean, I honestly, it's been a, it's been a perk traveling with them. I'd say in this age group. Now I'd say when they're one or two or three, the challenge is kind of typical of what everybody goes through the crying, the, the, the hungry, the haven't napped type issues. And, and I dealt with that for the first couple of years, but, it's there's no problem now they're little travelers now so everything's easy That's awesome yeah um yeah so i don't have kids but i do have a dog who whines the entire time <laughs> so i know how people feel like when the kids are crying because my dog is doing it the entire time and it's awful listen i'm totally understanding of furry furry family members furry kids and real kids like if i'm on a flight and there's a crying kid I'm, I'm the type that's like, hey, mom, you need me to hold that kid for you? I'll help you out. <laughs> I get it. It's such a stressful endeavor for them. Now, if the parent's not doing anything to calm the kid down, then I have no sympathy for him. But if the, kid, if the parent's trying, then I'm like, all right, let me, let, me, let me see if I can help out. But I don't want to be that creepy guy that's trying to like <laughs> touch someone's <laughs> child. But I would do it. I would do it if they left. <laughs> I'm sure if you're with the girls and your wife, it makes it a little bit better. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. I wish I could do it alone, but then I'd be the creepy, creepy guy, just traveling, single guy looking. You know. <laughs> Although you could always hold my dog. So, you know. Okay, cool. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so something that you and I tend to talk a lot about is how it pays to be nice in yeah. what we do. Mm -hmm. uh, you hear like way too many stories about people complaining and, you know, having fights with like customer service or whatever. And all you really sometimes have to do, as you know, is call, like yeah. with a smile on your face, say please and thank you. And usually you can get something accomplished that somebody else said, oh, those people never help me. 
Right. So you have your own interesting story that, uh, sure. that you can tell so, us about. So yeah. So I mean, I'm not a, I've had status with all the hotel chains and some of the airlines, but I'm not, I'm not a status chaser per se. So I use my, my, just my kindness, um, call it persuasiveness, but I'm really just trying to be nice to people overall so that I have a more pleasant experience. And that results in a lot of times people doing things like offering you a better room, uh, giving you a, a extra economy seat with more space without you having to pay for it. So I had an experience um, at the Andes Papagayo, Costa Rica, which I've written about ex exclusively about being one of my favorite properties in the world. Um, and, you know, all I was was being friendly to the waiter and that waiter just took care of us every, every, I mean, every other morning or every morning, um, just by offering extra things for my kids with, at no cost. And everybody knows that the breakfast there is like $35 a person, including children. So um, to be able to, to be able to just be friendly and get that warm kind of appreciation from a staff member at a busy hotel, mm -hmm. um, it just shows that it really does pay to be kind to your hospitality workers, your airline workers, your wherever you go, really. I mean, I can't, I can't stress enough how, to me, that's the most important status you could have is just the kindness. As cliche and as corny as that sounds, um, it's worked for me. So again, I don't, I don't chase Marriott Platinum and, and globalist status. I'm literally middle tier and everything, mm -hmm. but it's the kindness that kind of elevates my experiences when I travel. Yep. And I mean, also just kind of being nice to people just kind of puts you in a better sure. mood, like as a person in general, right? Like right. if I can make somebody laugh, like I tell cheesy dad jokes to pretty much every customer service agent I come into contact with because they make me laugh. <laughs> and then, you know, they either like giggle or they want nothing to do with me, whatever. If I can put a smile on somebody's face, that makes me smile. And then my day is better for it, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. And then, yeah, like you're saying, sometimes you get those perks just literally because you said like thank you think about it too we're traveling it's one of our favorite things to do in our in our lives right mm -hmm. and it's and it's so if we if we're on that cloud nine and we're naturally just so happy to be like on a flight to xyz place if you keep that momentum going that happiness that oh we're checking into the hotel now and you maintain that happiness throughout your i guess your demeanor or your ambiance People pick up on that energy and then all of a sudden now you're upgraded to a room twice your category because you were nice to the front desk agent because mm -hmm. you were genuinely on, a, on cloud nine. So those type of things are what a lot of our folks in points and miles forget to, forget to kind of focus on is these people, they're human just like us. And if we're, if we're not in that entitled mindset, then we'll, we'll, we'll have a better experience when we travel usually. Absolutely. Yeah. The first thing I always say when people ask me a question, like when they say like customer service wouldn't help me, I kind of, I try to say it nicely, but I say like, well, did you call and ask like nicely? <laughs> yeah. How did you word it? Right. Yeah. How did you articulate it? Yeah, I don't want to exactly, say like, exactly. were you being a, you know, but <laughs> that's kind of what I want to know because I, I, I could change I'm with you. I'm with you. I tell people, I tell people, friends and family, I'm like, Hey, let's call on three way. Do you want me to help you talk? Because honestly, like some people just are annoyed or they're abrasive or they don't just know how to finagle their, their needs uh, in a way that's not going to come off as you're being, you're being a rude person. Right. So, so I don't want to say any derogatory terms, but. Uh, yeah, yeah, I hear you. Keep We're keeping this PG, right? We're keeping this PG. Yeah, right? trying. Okay, cool. I think I've edited out plenty of curses uh, okay, in the cool. first couple. <laughs> okay, good. Uh, it's usually me, so. All right. Um, no, no worries. Oh. Do you, is that a child I hear or a, or a no. pet? No, no, no. I dropped something. Child and pet, doors closed. No one's interfering. This is oh, nice I, in point 30 minutes of my day. Awesome. Yay. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> it should be the most important 30 minutes of everybody's day. <laughs> Let's make it that. Let's make it that. Let's make it that. Well, oh, oh so I have a question. Yeah. So I really couldn't think of somebody that you and I kind of know equally. Uh-huh. Um, because I've been doing bets with people where like, we'll message somebody and it, it supports charity, but I couldn't think of anybody for you. So basically like what I did with Angelina was we both messaged Jeff at the same time because we're like, yeah. si you know, we're similarly equal friends to him right. and whoever he responded to first was the winner and the other person had to donate to that person's charity. That, okay, okay, okay. I can't think of anybody. Sorry, I wish we had someone in common that we could both just- Yeah, you know what? We have to do more meetups where yeah, we- Yeah, yeah, Like, strengthen our 
friendships with mutual friends. Agreed, agreed. Well, it'd be nice to, to mingle with these folks. Yeah, and I came to your event in Miami, which was freaking awesome. That, thank I you. actually can't believe that you put together such a uh, kind of cool group of people for our hobby. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> like, I thought, just... like, they were, go, uh, sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead. You go ahead. Uh, so they were, like, young, interesting, um, not saying that there's anything wrong with not being young, but in our right. hobby, it doesn't tend to be, like, young people who are interested right. in miles and points. Right. So where no, did you find true. all these people? So these are a lot of people are my network, my network of uh, my nine to five, my wife's employee colleagues, um, and some friends. And, um, and really it's just, I've, I've been locally in Miami promoting points and miles and creating like groups and meetups. So I think from word of mouth, people started to want to attend these events, but you're right. I think overall, it's pretty surprising. Miami also maybe has a, a younger generation that kind of is interested in travel versus in, in like other states, there that that is not as prevalent. It's more like, you know, the older older age people that really want to maximize their their spend for whatever. But these people are the people that attended are educated and they want to like learn more. And that's you're right, it was a cool group. And I, I, my first my first meeting wasn't um wasn't the same demographics as my second one, which was with you. So that was cool. And it, it helped that I also positioned it like you're coming from New York to help out and you're also an expert in the field and you're a woman. So like that also helped to kind of sell the idea to everyone to attend. And Miami is a very fickle city, as I told you. So we had 30 something attendees, which for, for Miami, for another city, that would be like 60 attendees. And it was, it was pretty cool to have those people kind of mingling. Yeah. yeah. I couldn't believe it. I was actually like having a good time. I was like, I would hang out with these people. That's which awesome. is pretty rare. So I would come anytime. And I I'm mean, gonna invite you again. and next I'm time I'll stay, you, you know, like, and we'll like yeah. eat dinner before or we'll after, hang out. whatever. Yes. Yeah. We'll hang out. We have to do Definitely. that next time. But I'll do it once this thing settles down and let's get you down here. Again. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm not coming tomorrow. <laughs> I don't want you to. I don't want you New to. York is like a freaking battlefield right now. I know. I know. What are you doing every day? Like, can uh, you go outside of your house? Well, luckily, I mean, this is the first time I'm ever going to say this. Luckily, I moved to Long Island a year and a half ago. <laughs> <laughs> I know, because you want to be back in Brooklyn, right? You want to be oh, back in like, the so city. So badly. You I, know, no idea. I but, know. But I mean, the last couple of weeks, it's feeling like, you know, I got real lucky here because I'm seeing the pictures and like, Absolutely. like, it's not, it's not funny. It's not humorous, but no, in a I way, know. it's sort of like, it's just something that you never, ever in life believed was going to happen especially like in central park in the middle of manhattan you know no it's nuts you're right it's absolutely crazy you're lucky because everyone in new york is so bottled up together side by side right so like yes. you're on top of each other and you get to be in long island where you kind of have your own enclave you have a backyard you have an actual yes. backyard that's oh, why we moved here yeah for the dog oh, right, oh, right 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 mm -hmm. right Big it's, dog. A, it's a blessing yeah. it's a blessing that you're there i just hope this i really hope this settles down and and we get we get on top of it in this country so that we can start kind of moving on with our lives. I, I can't, I can't, I mean, I love working from home. Don't get me wrong, but like this, like quarantine every day is just kind of driving people mad. Mm -hmm. How much are you able to go out? Like I haven't been yeah. gone to the food store because. Oh no. Like not good here. No. So Florida's like, Florida's like getting like New York, South Florida, mm -hmm. especially they say Miami's like the number one, 60% of the, the coronavirus cases in Florida are from Miami. So since I live like very close to Miami, um, I'm not going out much. Like I'll do yeah. a, a grocery store run once a week and I'll load up. Mm -hmm. And I do go to a park near my house. That's always empty. And I go with the girls and we ride bike and I run around, but we got to, otherwise I don't have a backyard. My backyard is like a lake and it has alligators. So I don't oh, have a place to like hang out. So. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, definitely no swimming in the lake. No, no, no. <laughs> but uh, overall, I just every I just want to get back to travel and our normal routine, right? Third world problem, sure, but uh, our first world problem, I should say. Well, but, um, I don't know, man. I mean, this is like an every world problem at this point, so I don't think you're complaining irrationally. <laughs> I mean, my complaining about wanting to travel is kind of like, I mean, I, people are dying, and I'm like, I just want to travel already. I mean, it's, the grand scheme of things, it's not that important. But us points and miles, folks. Um, you know, travel is, is our oxygen. So yeah, we're getting hit hard because we're yeah. not used to like, most people are not used to being in the house, but right. we're like not used to being in the house and not on a plane or in a hotel. So right. we're stuck. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like I would exactly. be impressed by the holiday Inn at this point. 
Oh yeah. Oh yeah. 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 <laughs> I yeah. still should stay at a Holiday Inn right now. I, I've actually thought about leaving to like Colombia to visit my dad with the kids and be quarantined there for like a month because at least there I'm in a different setting. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm different eating different food. I'm, I'm hearing a different language. Like just, for, but then I'm like, then my, my other side says, no, you're an idiot. Get, get your work done and stay here and don't leave anywhere. Right. Uh, so well, how would you get there? Uh, there's still flights. There's still flights though. So it's nuts. They need to completely stop all flights nationwide wide but they're not going to do that. Cause, no, yeah. they won't. But hopefully people are taking it more seriously than they were a few weeks ago. Yeah. Yeah. I, I can't so. wait to get moving again. Like maybe like a tweet, like the loser has to donate to their charity. It's the same concept, but with okay. Twitter. <laughs> okay. So we'll do 20 bucks. Do you cool with that? My charity is the East Coast Canine Rescue in okay. Connecticut. What is your charity? Mine is a big one. It's um, uh, March of Dimes. Very nice. Okay. I mean, for the last two, I did ASPCA, but I figured I'd switch to a more local one for this one. Okay. Uh, okay. So, cool. so either way, somebody's getting 20 bucks and we will figure out. Uh, post. The post. Yeah. Like, hey, I need likes or no, we're not asking for likes. We're just saying. No, you can't ask for likes, but oh, <sighs> that's, you know what? That makes it a lot more fun. Okay, cool. All right, let's do it. That's awesome. That's okay, awesome. so my so it's what do you think? Cool. Got to be totally Ooh. like random, yeah. Let the competition begin. That's right. Uh, <laughs> are, are you a betting man usually? I like betting. Yeah, I, I'm. I'm like you. I'm like you, but I don't do Vegas betting. I do like online sports betting. So, uh, so are you? Wait, did you see the thing about Tiger and and Phil and Peyton Manning and Tom Brady? No. What? All right. So you you know how last year uh, Tiger and Phil uh, faced off in their like for their own money for charity yeah yeah um so this year they're doing it again so it's going to be like the second round but they're having two amateur players peyton manning and tom brady join oh, them that's so cool but for tom brady it would be the best thing i ever heard i wish it was somebody else sorry patriots nation <laughs> um but peyton manning and tiger are a team like oh, tiger is what? the true love of my life really yes well, he's the best golfer I've ever seen. That's oh my cool. God. Oh, chills. So that just, <laughs> yeah, that just came out today. I'm That's so cool. Excited. No, I'm yeah. going to look it up. I'm going to look it up. I didn't know they were doing it again. Yeah. And you know, what's really cool that I really loved about it for us sports bettors on like each hole, they do the odds and what the Vegas bets were. Like, so you know, like part you, three on this whole. Yeah. Thing. And like, you know, it was like giving 110, getting 110, like, uh, Minus 110, plus yeah, 110. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. That's yeah. cool. I'm going to look it up. I'm going to look it up. Yeah, awesome. Cool. Yeah. Amazing. So uh, now we're going to play Plead the Fifth. Deal. Uh, so this is where it gets a little, a little dicey. <laughs> so I ask you three questions. You get to plead the fifth to one of them. Okay. I will tell you that the... Uh, the second one is a gimme, so you can pick between either the first or the last to plead the fifth. Okay. Okay. So first, um, who or what site would you say is like a global pandemic all on their own? Like they're just such a hot mess in our industry. In our industry? Yeah. Oh, man. You do have one plead the fifth. Uh, I'll plead the fifth on this one. Okay. Good choice. Yeah. All right. <laughs> now, second is the opposite. Who would you say gives you a run for your money as the best travel blogger of all time? Um, so I, I honestly have several, but can I, I have to just give one? If I, have uh, to just you, give. I mean, if you, if you have like a couple, don't give me like 15 people, but. I'll be honest, for, from a mask consumption uh, I think Lucky Ben from One Amount Out of Time is is incredible. Um, mm -hmm. I just I like his content and I started reading his content as a newbie like eight nine years ago. But yeah. I, I think I have to shout him out because he's been very helpful with me throughout my years when I first started off. Uh, Gary Gary left the wing. You from the wing? Yeah, you from the wing. Gary's always been good. I like his perspective and I like how he sometimes um, analyzes certain things. He's very in the know. He's not just points and miles. He knows a little about the aviation business and, and airline industry. And so I, I really just, I really admire everything that he puts, that puts out there. I really do. I like a lot of his content. 
Yeah, I uh, I would agree with you. Um, I think both of those guys are freaking awesome. Yeah. And the interesting thing about, well, so first of all, one mile at a time is that I feel like they're not, they don't just pump things. It's literally like he loves what he does and that is so clear, you right. know? And right. Tiffany is amazing. Uh, you, um, you, and then you met Jared, her. what? You met her, you met her, you went to an event with her recently, right? Yeah, yeah. I think I drive her crazy, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> Because I'm always like, oh my God, Tiffany. Like, I'm like, I'll be like sitting in like front row, like during all her, show, like her speeches. She's like, at least she's I have cool. a fan club. <laughs> she's cool. She's cool. Yeah. She's good. I read her stuff too. Yeah, she's cool. And then, and again, Gary, I think he doesn't have any contributors. It's all him. So um, the fact that he's able to kind of juggle his, his day job, but also his site. So he stays on top of all the yeah. news and stuff. So it's very impressive, honestly. Mm -hmm. And he's not afraid to say what he thinks, which is something that I think a lot of people are like, I feel like Gary, he is interested in a post. He puts it together and that's the end of it. You don't like it too bad. And I love that about him because I do too. the most interesting posts come from his site, you know? Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's very refreshing in our hobby to not, to just say what you want to say and, and not worry yeah. about the repercussions. Yeah. 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 So I love that. Uh, okay. Now we're going to play shag, marry, kill. Okay. This is your third one. You already pled the fifth, so you have to answer. Would you shag, marry, kill? And I know his wife, so it's okay. I know she won't care. Okay. I'm writing this down, too. All right. <laughs> I love that you're writing this down. I, I just want to think of things like characteristics and personality. <laughs> Still. Okay, let's go. Mark Osterman. <laughs> <laughs> um, Gary. And I oh, I'm not gonna do it to you. I know and, what you're gonna say. And, and Brian Kelly. Oh, I knew you were gonna say that. All right, uh, let's do this. I'm going to. You know what? Let's marry Mark. Let's marry Mark just because he he every day would be a different day with him. Love it. Uh, Love it. Let's go ahead and let's go ahead and, let's go ahead and shag Brian. Let's shag Brian. All and right. then, uh, let's just kill Gary because he's just too smart and we don't need that <laughs> type of intelligence on this earth. You don't need that kind of competition in life. <laughs> I don't need that. <laughs> All right, good answer. I like All it. Right. I like it too. I like it too. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. That was good. That was fun. That was fun. Right? It's like a good yeah, time. Yeah, I like it. I like yeah. Uh, all right. Well, Juan, thank you so much. Thanks for having me. It's Bethany. been a pleasure having you. And hopefully we'll get to do this again soon because I always love hanging out with you. See you again.